What is the purpose of Spring IOC container? Option A to handle HTTP requests and responses. Option B to inject dependencies and manage the lifecycle of a beans. Option C to handle HTTP requests and responses. Option D to configure security settings. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B to inject the dependencies using dependency injection and manage the lifecycle of a beans. Well, the Spring IOC container is responsible for managing the lifecycle and dependencies of a Spring beans. It automatically injects the required dependencies into the beans using dependency injection mechanism and it controls the creation, initialization and destruction of the Spring beans. So this enables loose coupling between components and promotes more maintainable and testable code. What are the different ways to configure Spring based applications? Option A XML based configuration, Option B Java based configuration, Option C Annotation based configuration, Option D All of the above. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is Option D All of the above. Well, Spring based applications can be configured using three primary methods. XML based configuration, Java based configuration, as well as annotation based configuration. Using XML based configuration, you can define the beans and their dependency in the XML file. At configuration annotation and at bin annotation, you can define the Spring beans using Java based configuration. And using annotations like at component, at service, at autoword annotation to automatically detect and wire the beans using annotation based configuration. What is the default scope of a Spring bean in a Spring boot? Option A prototype option b request option c singleton option d session well you have 5 seconds to choose your correct option the correct answer is singleton in a spring boot or a spring framework the default scope of a spring bean is singleton this means that only one instance of the bean is created and shared across the entire application. Here is one more question. Which Spring annotation is used to define a bean in a Java based configuration? Option A at service annotation, option B at component annotation, option C at bean annotation, and option D at repository annotation. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. Correct answer is option C at bean annotation. Well, at bin annotation is used to define a Spring bean in a Java based configuration in a Spring Boot application. The other annotations like at service as component at repository. So these annotations we can use to, you know, create a Spring component or a Spring bean using annotation based configuration. But this at bin annotation, we typically use to create a bean using Java based configuration in a Spring Boot application. Here is a one more question. Which Spring annotation is used to handle HTTP POST request? Option A, get mapping annotation. Option B, put mapping annotation. Option C, create mapping annotation. Option D, post mapping annotation. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option D, post mapping annotation. Well, the post mapping annotation in a Spring Boot is used to map the HTTP post request to a specific handler methods in the controller. And we typically use the post mapping annotation to create the resources at the server side. And this post mapping annotation is a shortcut annotation for request mapping annotation plus HTTP post method. Here is a one more question. What is the use of exception handler annotation in a Spring Boot? Option A to handle a scheduled task. Option B to map HTTP request to a methods. Option C to handle specific exceptions in a controller or globally. Option D to manage database transactions. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C to handle specific exceptions in a controller or globally. Well, at exception handler annotation in a Spring Boot is used to define the methods that handle specific exceptions in a controller. It allows you to manage the exceptions that occur within a controller by providing a custom responses or actions when an exception is thrown, enhancing error handling in the application. We can also use at exception handler annotation to handle the specific exceptions globally. Here is the one more question. What does the auto wired annotation do in a Spring Boot? Option A, manually inject dependencies into fields, constructors or setters. Option B, automatically inject dependencies into fields, constructors or setters. 
Option D, automatically create a new instance of a class. Option D, mark a bean as a lazy initialized. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B. It automatically inject the dependencies into fields, constructors and setter methods. Well, auto wired annotation in a Spring Boot is used to automatically inject the dependencies into fields, constructors and setter methods. This annotation is a part of Spring Framework dependency injection mechanism. This reduces the need for manual wiring of dependencies and promotes a more modular and decoupled code base. Here is a one more question. What does the configuration annotation do in a Spring Boot? Option A. It marks a class as a Spring component. Option B. It marks a class as a source of bean definitions. Option C. It marks a class as a Spring controller. Option D. It marks a class as a RESTful service. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B. It marks a class as a source of Spring Beans. Well, the configuration annotation in a Spring Boot is used to mark a class as a source of bin definitions. Well, whenever we want to define a Spring Beans using at bin annotation, then typically we create a class and we annotate that class with at configuration annotation. And within that class, we define the Spring Beans using at bin annotation, right? So basically in order to configure the beans using Java-based configuration, we use at configuration annotation. Here is a one more question. What is the purpose of service annotation in a Spring Boot? Option A, to define a main entry point of the application. Option B, to indicate that a class is a Spring service component. Option B, to configure a security settings. Option D, to map HTTP request to handler methods. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, to indicate that a class is a Spring service component. Well, at service annotation in a Spring Boot is used to indicate that a class performs service related business logic. It helps in marking a class as a service layer component, which Spring automatically detects and registers as a Spring Bean, making it available for dependency injection in other parts of the application. Well, we typically use at service annotation to make a class as a Spring component in a service layer. And within that service component, we keep all the business logic of the application. Here is one more question. What is the use of at scheduled annotation in a Spring Boot? Option A, to schedule HTTP requests. Option B, to define a scheduled task that run at a fixed intervals. Option C, to configure application start behavior. Option D, to register beans automatically in application context. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. Well, the correct answer is option B to define a scheduled task that run at a fixed intervals. Well, at schedule annotation in a Spring Boot is used to schedule a task to be executed at a specific intervals or time. This annotation helps you to run a methods automatically at a fixed rate with a fixed delay or according to cron expressions, making it useful for automating periodic, periodic tasks in the application. Here is a one more question. What is the purpose of path variable annotation in a Spring Boot? Option A, to bind a query parameters to a method arguments. Option B, to map form data to a model object. Option C, to extract values from the URL path and bind them to the method parameters. Option D, to handle file uploads in a web applications. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, to extract values from the URL path and bind them to the method parameters. Well. Add path variable annotation in a Spring Boot is used to bind a values from URI path to a method parameters in the controller. It allows you to capture dynamic parts of the URL and use them within a method for processing such as retrieving the specific resources based on the ID. Well, whenever you want to extract the data from the URL line directly bind to the method parameters, you can use add path variable annotation. Here is a one more question. What is the use of add request param annotation in a Spring Boot? Option A, to bind form data to a model object. Option B, to extract query parameters from the URL and bind them to the method parameters. Option C, to configure database connections. Option D, to secure certain endpoints in the application. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, to extract query parameters from the URL and bind them to the method arguments. Well, at request param annotation in Spring Boot is used to bind 
a query parameters from the URL to a method parameters in the controller. This annotation allows you to access request parameters and pass them into your method for processing, making it useful for handling form submissions or filtering the data. Here is one more question. What is the role of add profile annotation in a Spring Boot? Option A to enable caching for specific beans. Option B to specify which bin should be loaded in a different environment. Option C to configure database connections. Option D to secure certain endpoints in application. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B to specify which bin should be loaded in the different environments. Well, add profile annotation in a Spring Boot is used to conditionally load beans based on the active profile. Profiles allow you to define different configurations for different environments such as development, testing and production and only the beans marked with the active profile will be loaded during the application startup. Here is one more question. Which annotation is used to create asynchronous methods in a Spring Boot? Option A. Add schedule annotation. Option B. Add async annotation. Option C. Add transactional annotation. Option D. Add autoid annotation. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B. Add async annotation. Well, add async annotation in a Spring Boot is used to mark a method asynchronous, allowing you to run in a separate thread without blocking the main execution flow. When this annotation is applied to a method, Spring will execute the method in a background, returning immediately to the caller while the task continues to run. Here is one more question. What is the use of query annotation in a Spring Data JPA? Option A to establish database connections. Option B to define a custom SQL or JPQL queries for repository methods. Option B to map entity classes to database tables. Option D to perform batch updates in the database. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B to define a custom SQL or JP. QL queries for a repository methods. Well, the query annotation in a Spring Data JPA allows you to define a custom SQL or JPQL queries directly in the repository methods. So this provides a flexibility when the default query generation is insufficient or when more complex queries are required. You can write both native SQL and JPQL queries using this query annotation. What is the default implementation class of JP repository interface. Option A simple JP repository. Option B JP repository IMPL class. Option C custom JP repository. Option D default JP repository. Well, you have 5 seconds to choose your correct answer. You can also comment out in a comment section. Well, the correct answer is simple JP repository. The simple JPA repository class is the default implementation of JPA repository interface in Spring Data JPA. It is provided by Spring Data JPA framework and serves as a generic repository implementation for performing common crude operations and other database operations. Just remember, simple JPA repository class is the default implementation of JPA repository interface in a Spring Data JPA. What is the minimum version of Java is required for Spring Boot 3? Option A, Java 8. Option B, Java 11. Option C, Java 17. Option D, Java 21. Well, you have 5 seconds to choose the correct option. The correct answer is Java 17. Well, Spring Boot 3 requires minimum Java 17. Okay. You can use Java 18 or higher, but make sure that if you are using Spring Boot 3 to develop the RESTful web services or microservices, then you have to use minimum Java version 17. Here is one more question. What is the use of web client in a Spring Boot? Option A to handle HTTP requests and responses in a reactive way. Option B to replace REST template with non-blocking client. Option C testing REST APIs. Option D both A and B. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option D, both A and B. Well, Spring Boot's web client is a non-blocking 
reactive client that is used to handle HTTP requests and responses in a reactive way. Spring team recommended that web client is going to be a replacement for REST template. The web client is a part of Spring WebPlux module and it supports both synchronous and asynchronous communication. It provides a flexibility and powerful way to interact with the RESTful web services, making it ideal for modern scalable applications. Here is a one more question. What is the purpose of REST controller advice annotation in a Spring Boot? Option A, to handle exceptions for REST controllers globally. Option B, to configure REST endpoints. Option C, to apply caching for REST controllers. Option D, to configure security for REST endpoints. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A, to handle exceptions for REST controllers globally. Well, the REST controller advice annotation in a Spring Boot is used to handle exceptions globally for REST controllers. This annotation works similar to controller advice annotation, but this REST controller advice annotation is specifically designed for RESTful web services. When an exception is thrown in a REST controller, REST controller advice annotation intercept that exception and it provides a custom response for that exception and return the customary response back to the client. Here is the one more question. How can Java records be used with the Spring Boot applications? Option A, as a replacement for Spring Beans. Option B, to define a immutable data transfer objects. Option C, to replace all Spring controllers. Option D, as a substitute for application.properties file. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B to define immutable data transfer objects. Well, Java records can be effectively used in a Spring Boot applications to define immutable data transfer objects. Well, here data transfer objects is basically a design pattern that we use to transfer the data between client and server. Since records are designed to be immutable and concise, so they are excellent fit for DTOs where the focus is on carrying data between different layers. Here is the question. What is the role of Spring Boot application annotation in a Spring Boot? Option A. It is used to define a batch job. Option B. It is used to mark a configuration class. Option C. It's equivalent to using configuration, enable to configuration and component scan annotations. Option D. It is used as a substitute for application.properties file. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C. It is equivalent using configuration, enable, auto configuration, and component scan annotation. Well, Spring Boot application annotation is a combination of three important annotations configuration, enable, auto configuration, and component scan. This Spring Boot application annotation it mark a main entry point class in a Spring Boot application. And Spring Boot application internal uses enable auto configuration annotation to enable auto configuration, which automatically configures the Spring Boot application based on the dependencies included in the project. Here is one more question. How are static resources served in a Spring Boot web application? Option A, using custom controller to map static files. Option B, through the static folder under SRC main resources folder. Option C, by adding them to the application's root package. Option D, through the application.properties configuration file. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B through the static folder under src main resources. Well, we don't have to manually configure the location of the static files. Spring Boot will automatically pick up all the static files like CSS files, JavaScript files and images from the directories which are located under this directory, src main resources directory. Here is one more question. Which annotation is used to create asynchronous methods in a Spring Boot? Option A, add schedule annotation. Option B, add async annotation. Option C, Add transactional annotation option D at a toilet annotation. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B at a sync annotation. Well, at a sync annotation in a Spring Boot is used to mark a method asynchronous, allowing you to run in a separate thread without blocking the main execution flow. When this annotation is applied to a method, Spring will execute the method in a background returning immediately to the caller while the task continues to run.